Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about my MNG project, which is on detecting political bias on Reddit with transfer learning. Now, detecting political bias on social media is an incredibly important problem to tackle. Nowadays, a significant majority of people get their news from social media. Detecting political bias on social media helps quantify political sentiment online, which is incredibly important for political research, especially during election seasons. Now, specifically, we want to tackle this problem with machine learning and natural language processing, because this is often much faster than using humans for the same task. And humans can accidentally introduce their own political biases into their labeling. The big problem with social media comments is that there isn't much annotated data available. If you think of a data set of, for example, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of tweets, each of those tweets could be by a different author, each with their own slightly different political view. And so asking human annotators to individually annotate all those tweets is essentially unfeasible with the time that they have. So the main objective of this project is to investigate methods of detecting political bias on social media without using any labeled data. Now, this eliminates most traditional supervised classification methods such as neural networks, support vector machines, etc. So you might be wondering how this is possible. And our idea is that while bias detection hasn't been tackled that much on social media due to the lack of annotated data, it has been tackled a lot in the news domain. Media watchdog organizations such as Media Bias Fact Check have manually annotated entire news sources as being left wing, right wing or center. And these can be used as ground truth data uh, to detect political bias in the news. So what if we could leverage the knowledge learned from detecting bias in news for the same task on social media comments. Now, this is a type of machine learning called transfer learning. Specifically, it's called domain adaptation. In this particular case, we, we're treating news as the source domain, since it's the domain we're learning data from. And social media comments is the target domain, since it's what we're applying our learned knowledge to. Specifically, when there's no label data in the target domain, we call this problem unsupervised domain adaptation. Now, for our experiments, we choose Reddit as our social network of choice. And using the Reddit API, we collect a series of news articles that have been linked to in Reddit posts, plus the corresponding stream of Reddit comments. Now, we focus on a binary classification task, so either predicting whether something is left wing or right wing. So we collect from subreddits which are explicitly left or right wing, as you can see uh, in this table. Now, the classifiers we're going to use are based off of BERT, which is a language representation model based off the transformers architecture that achieves state of the art performance in lots of different NLP tasks. And with a linear layer plus a softmax layer, BERT can be used to take in raw sequences of text and produce a class prediction, which in our case is either left or right. Now, BERT is trained slightly differently to standard supervised classifiers. Training is split into two stages called pre-training and fine tuning. But it's pre-trained on a gigantic corpus of around 3.3 billion words of generic English text taken from book corpus on Wikipedia. It's pre-trained for the tasks of mass language modeling and next sentence prediction. And essentially, pre-training helps but develop a good understanding of the English language and its syntax. But is then later fine-tuned for the actual task at hand, which in our case is political bias classification, which is a type of sequence classification. Now let's get on to some actual transfer learning methods that we tried. So first we explored direct transfer, which is the simplest form of transfer learning. In this situation, a model is simply trained on data from the source domain. It's then tested on target domain data, and that is it. Now applying this concept to BERT models, we actually tend to keep the pre-training stage unchanged by convention. So in this diagram, we're comparing a direct transfer BERT model from some source domain to some target domain to a standard or what we call in-domain classifier for the target domain. Now, this is a standard classifier that involves no transfer learning at all. We can see that in both classifiers, we actually keep the pre-training stage unchanged. This is mainly because it's computationally hugely expensive to keep pre-training BERT again and again. The only differences are that in the direct transfer case, we fine tune on the source domain before then testing our model on the target domain. Whereas with the in-domain classified, fine tuning and inference both occur on the target domain. Next, I'll explain another transfer learning method we use, which is a state of the art domain adaptive version of BERT called Adaptive BERT. But before that, I need to go over some of BERT's pre-training objectives. So I mentioned earlier, BERT is pre-trained for the tasks of mass language modeling and next sentence prediction. With mass language modeling, random words in the training corpus are replaced with mask tokens. BERT is trained to predict what those words are and this helps BERT learn context between words. 
With next sentence prediction, a data set is formed comprising of sentence pairs where 50% of the time the second sentence, so sentence B, is the sentence that actually follows sentence A in the original training corpus. And the other 50% 50 of the time, it's a randomly selected sentence. And given a sentence pair, Bert is tasked with predicting whether or not sentence B actually follows sentence A in the original corpus. And this helps Bert learn context across sentences and across longer sequences of text. Now, Adapter Bert is able to extend direct transfer by including an extra mass language modeling stage or MLM stage during fine tuning. And mass language modeling here is performed on a combination of the source and target domain data, unlike during pre-training when it's performed on generic English text. Now, what makes this extra powerful is that MLM is an unsupervised stage. What I mean by that is that creating MLM training examples doesn't involve any political bias annotations. And so no extra labeled target domain data is needed for uh, is needed by Adaptabert, which is perfect for our use case of social media comments where we don't have any annotated data. Now, getting some juicy results, we evaluate direct transfer and adapter BERT for the bias detection task on the Reddit data we collected. We evaluate articles to comments transfer and also our, uh, comments to articles transfer to see if there's any interesting insights. And actually, we find comments to articles transfer tends to perform a lot better than articles to comments transfer. We obtain in-domain uh, F1 scores of around 67% in the articles to comments case, but around 76% for the comments to articles case. So this indicates that actually political bias in social media comments is actually quite a good predictor of the bias in the news articles that they're reacting to, which is a line of thinking that hasn't really been explored in the literature so far. We can see that Adaptabert outperforms direct transfer by around 4% in F1 score in the articles to comments case and by around 5% in the comments to articles case. However, both still fall short of using an in-domain classifier. There are fairly mixed results for the articles to comments case and in the comments articles case, Adaptabert actually comes pretty close to matching in domain performance, even if it's not quite there. Now, so far, Adaptabert only adds an MLM stage and MLM, as mentioned earlier, only attunes BERT embeddings to word level context and not necessarily sentence level context. But looking at our data set, a lot of news articles have a lot of sentences in them. There's a significant proportion of articles with 40 plus and even 60 plus sentences. On average, each article has around 30 sentences, actually. So for this reason, we propose extending Adaptabert with a next sentence prediction or NSP stage to help Adaptabert capture that cross sentence context in the target domain. And our hypothesis is that this will help when articles is the target domain. Now, this is the architecture we propose compared to standard Adaptabert. We add an extra NSP stage, again, performing NSP on a combination of the source and target domain. Now, evaluating our extended version of Adaptabert for the same task as earlier. From the looks of things, our hypothesis hasn't actually been validated. We get no, no performance benefit uh, using extended Adaptabert in the articles to comments case. And there's actually very small performance deterioration in the comments to articles case. Now, from here, we think that the lack of improvement could be because the source and target domain in this case have very different distributions of number of sentences per training example. Looking at our data set, although news articles tend to have a lot of sentences, the Reddit comments in our data set tend to have very few sentences, on average only around two sentences. So to investigate further, we examine running our extended adaptabert for a different domain adaptation task with another data set where the source and target domain have a more similar distribution of sentences per training example. We look at a named entity recognition task that's explored in the original Adaptabert paper. Named entity recognition is the task of labeling tokens in the text by category. So for example, labeling which tokens refer to a TV show or a company or a location or a person, etc. And in this situation, we examine transfer from the domain of news articles to the domain of tweets. So actually a fairly similar transfer learning setup to what we had earlier. Now, in terms of the data that we use, the important thing to note is that in our news article data set this time we use uh, a data set of news article snippets rather than entire news articles and so looking at the distribution of sentences in each data set we can see both article snippets and tweets have a very small number of sentences on average there's only around one sentence per article snippet on average and around one to three sentences per tweet and now running Adaptabert and extended Adaptabert for this task using articles to tweet transfer, we can see that 
our extended version of Adaptivert does actually outperform standard Adaptivert for this task. It outperforms by around 3.3% in F1 score. And this is actually more than the amount that Adaptivert outperforms simple direct transfer, which means that this is a pretty significant improvement. And extended Adaptivert is now much closer to in-domain classifier performance. Now, there's many different ways our research here could be extended. We could experiment with adding different stages to adapt about during fine tuning, so not just next sense of prediction. We could also explore a multimodal approach. So we found a lot of links on Reddit aren't actually linked to news articles, but are links to photos. So we could perhaps build an image classifier to detect political bias and see if we could see if unifying that with an NLP classifier for detecting political bias could outperform using either of the two individually. Uh, a more practical extension is to build a browser extension for assessing echo chambers. So an echo chamber is a phenomenon seen on social media where users only see information and opinions that reinforce their own worldview. And using our classifiers to detect political bias on social media, we could build a browser extension that scans, for example, a user's Facebook feed and could determine whether all the content that the user is seeing is entirely left-wing or entirely right-wing. And if so, the user knows that they're in some kind of echo chamber.